bless football, Mike Golick Sr. God bless football, Mikey A. God bless football, Gojo. God bless football, Stu Gats. Thank you, Mike. Why did he do it like that? Why did your dad throw it to Mikey A and not you? He's sitting right next to you in a hotel right here. I and, mean, uh, what? what I, 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 my God, we do a show together. We talk together all the time. Do I have to always go to him? I mean, can I mix it up a little bit? Uh, I mean, you can and you did. But Mike Gola Jr., were, were you expecting your dad to throw that to you? Mikey A, were you expecting Mike Gola Sr. to throw it to you or Mike Gola Jr.? I was expecting Gojo. I was prepared to receive it, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how you got to approach it, yeah. because I've learned to expect the unexpected with my dad. Boom. Like on this trip where I say, Dad, you know what? I'll bring all the electronic equipment since we got to work on the road here. Don't worry about bringing all that stuff. But usually he knows there's one thing he's in charge of, which is bringing the headphone splitter. Couldn't be bothered to do that. And so he took his one responsibility for the trip and decided to just pass it to Mikey A instead, just like that. So I'm used to this at this point. Right. Yeah. But I will tell Whatever. you this. First off, your dad's had a couple of rough days. He had a cancellation. Uh, the flight yesterday was tough. There was a lot of traffic in New York City because a crane fell over on the Lower West Side. I mean, your dad's had a rough couple of days here, Mike. Give him a break, you know? That is true. That crane, that man, that was... That was... Wow. That was unbelievable. And listen, anytime... Isn't that what we all think? When you see a crane like that in a city, isn't one of the first things you think is, man, what if that fell? And sure enough, it actually fell. And I saw a crane later on. I was walking down closer to Times Square, and I saw a crane up there. And I'm just look, uh, ever, uh, walking past it. I'm looking at it the whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm looking at it is the it whole moving? time, waiting to see, yeah. Yeah. is something going to happen? Am I going to need to spring into action? Because we all think, like, you see these movies, like the Avengers or any action movie, and stuff's falling all over the place and people are diving. It's like, I don't have that kind of dis- dexterity in real life. I would hope I have a will to survive, but it's just not how it works. Usually. So the question is, if you saw it start to fall, would you look to run or would you look to help people who maybe didn't see it and get them out of the way. Such a good question, Mike, because he says he's going to spring into action. What are you going to do, Gojo? Yeah. Yeah, what, what's mean, the action? To be clear, spring into action is save my own ass. Okay. Exactly. Yes. And, and, I, and I brought that up for a reason, because one of the things uh, I get I get accused of all the time is watching videos on Twitter or Instagram. What, which, Street Justice videos? Yes, which <laughs> everybody does. And there was... There was a couple walking down the street, right, hand in hand, and two guys on motorcycles sped up and charged at them and grabbed the girl's purse. And as that was happening, the dude took off and ran, left his girlfriend, left his girlfriend while the two robbers took her purse. And the tape and and the, the film kept running. He ran out of the picture. She was just standing there. They were back at the motorcycle holding the purse, but the guy was getting back on the motorcycle, got back off, looked at her, looked down on the street like your dude ran away, walked over to her, said something, and gave her her purse back. And I get, if, if that girl didn't break up with him the next second. Well, because that seems like that was now like a hidden camera planned prank thing yeah, from yeah. these guys to expose what this guy was going to do. Maybe she even, big brain theory. Maybe. She wasn't sure about how the relationship was going. So she said it and up. She said, you know what? I'm going to ah, concoct this situation. Wow. I'm going to test him. Didn't think of that. Failed. That would be a Stu Gotts move right there. Yes, what does he say? <laughs> Stu Gotts would be going to meet the criminals with her purse yeah. and split what was inside around the other portion of the alley. 90-10 my way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. What does the boyfriend say? say? What does the boyfriend say? Like yeah, when, he, when, he, when she, like, I thought you were right behind me. I mean, like, he can say? say nothing. As a matter of fact, he probably just, the relationship was over then. And he's probably, she's probably going to try and find him or call him. And he's just not going to answer the call because he oh, knows that it's over. Right? right. You know what this makes me think of? And this is for all of you guys, because you're all married. You've had significant others for a while here. What's the most wrong you've ever been? Oh. <clears throat> so before that, I'm going to tell a Jason Day story. The golfer was at a, an NBA game. And I said this on air is back in the Mike and Mike days. And man, people were either with me or just crushing me. The ball, a, a ball 
Oh, they're in the first row. He and sit next to his wife. And the ball came flying at them, right? You know, they're right on the in the front row. And the ball came flying at them. It was more at his wife. He ducked out of the way. No way. And, and the no ball way. hit his wife. Oh, and no. I crushed no him. I crushed him on air saying, are you kidding me? You ducked and your wife got hit with the basketball. And people were kind of split, like saying, oh, it was just his natural reaction. I'm like, no. My natural reaction would be to protect the person I married and I loved, you know, not not dive out of the way and say, boy, hope it doesn't catch you in the in the grill. Bad day. Yeah, but that's a reflex thing. Those things happen very, very quickly. Like if you think the ball is coming at you, you suddenly forget who's sitting next to you, who you're supposed to take care of. You cover your own ass in that spot. I'm not saying he did the right. I'm not saying he did the right thing. Armed with hindsight, I am certain Jason Day is very embarrassed about it, but Mike, you don't know what, how you're going to react when here's, a ball comes flying here, at your face. Here's here's where I disagree. Unless you're, you're Kobe and you don't react. It, it, I, here's here's where I disagree and talk about reaction. I have been in a car where I have been driving and situations have a, a, arisen where you're almost in an accident. You were texting. and No, I wasn't texting. I was driving and, and your mother was in the car yeah, and and you almost get in an accident. And my first reaction was always to put my hand across, not to cop feel or anything, but, you know, to protect my wife man i know sorry pantomime that on me i know sorry but it was always protect you know and and not ah you know and so so i get what you're saying but i I think people in different situations have have been in that and i think for the most part the reaction is protect someone i feel like if Stu gots and abby abby would be the one oh oh, yeah exactly right 100 (laughs) percent Mikey, yeah, are you telling me, first off, explain what would happen. Who are you protecting in exact order if a crane were to fall on you in New York City? Uh, I did some soul searching, and the first per- the first people I would protect are my kids. I'd yeah. grab my kids, Naturally. then any dogs or puppies in the area, and then myself. Right. That's right. that's the order of which I would protect. About your what wife? if you're alone? What if yeah. you're alone? Are you I looking see- around? I'd be looking for anybody with a kid, right? On my way out, I'm helping any kids. On my way out. Hmm. Uh, Mike, what happens if you're with all your kids and you got to protect one of them? What's what's going on? Well, as I said, you know, when you say you love all your kids equal every day, that that's BS. (laughs) So it would be whatever that day led to who was the favorite child. That would be the first one I would say. So it all depend on the day and what order those kids were ranked that particular day. Right. Uh, which kid do you feel like would most, you know, rush to your protection, like protect you? Would it be None. Jojo? Would it be Jake? None, None of them. I mean, Sid? They, they, no. would all, they would all go protect their mother or really? any one of our dogs before really? I would be last. They would say, A, the old man can get out of the way himself or B, he's lived a long life. He's good. Sydney's got to protect her and collect her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sydney would be like, Dad, <laughs> yes. let me help you. And then not. And then know that the like, will. Sid would rush over, starpest. grab all your credit cards, and leave yeah. you to be hit by the crane. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be she'd be checking out my buddy, Dad. You okay? And go in my pocket and grab the wallet yep, out. Exactly. <laughs> telling telling the paramedics he's an organ donor. Yeah. <laughs> Which I am, by the way. Uh, I am, you? by the way. Yeah. Like, yes, by I the way, so we too. did this. We did this event at Pier Seventeen uh, last night, and uh, I think it went pretty well. But uh, looking at the Twitter reaction. Gojo, I don't know if you noticed this because there were pictures <laughs> sent uh, of yes. the four yeah. of us we, with Justin Tuck. Mike Golick, I mean, even my wife commented, how does your dad look so good as he gets older? It's like he's going, it's like he's getting younger as he gets older. It's a, he's never looked this good in his entire life, I don't think. I, I don't know, and I'm kind of sick of it. Yeah, I know. It's I'm annoying. really kind of sick. Every yeah. picture that I post of my dad, everyone just commenting on him like i get it i gotta lose weight all right me and my doctor had that conversation (laughs) last year i understand 268 is not the number you want to see right now i understand i'm the son of a type 2 diabetic so i need to make sure that stuff's locked in it's been a little bit of a hot boy summer all right (laughs) i've got myself into a few more beers than i have since i left college (laughs) those are all part of my journey that's part of my life and for people to judge me and shame me next to my father is uh, quite honestly disgraceful. I thought we were past that in 2023. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I thought you were going to go down the road of of the picture of Justin Tuck, me, my son Mike, and then you, Stu. 
Uh, well, I mean, just, I was gonna get know. I was gonna get to that next. Yeah. I, that's not a winning position for me. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. As I said, you needed an apple box. I mean, at yeah. least you work next to Justin Tuck. Yeah, like, that dude is just. I mean, wow. Big. What what can yes. you say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he's big. That's all I can say. He's very big, big and good I, looking. I mean, right, come on. Yeah. There's not many good positions for me with with football players, you know, unless it's like Doug Flutie, perhaps, you know. It's just it's it's a bad situation for me. But I am amazed that like, you know, I come home and my wife goes, Whew, Mike Golick Sr. looking good. I mean, how do you I always feel like about that? that? Yeah. I always like that. I know you do. Lot. I know you do. Yeah. yeah. She loves you, yeah. Mike. She does. She yeah. really does. But I think that this is part of what's going on with Abby. How much older are you than me, Mike? How old are you? I'm sixty. All right, so I'm fifty. She's like, how does that man have 10 years on you, yet he looks five years younger than you do? And that's where she's – it's – it's it's. she's impressed with you. She's concerned about her husband. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can say that felt like a subtweet. Well, yeah. Listen, how could she not be with the last thing we did together in Tahoe? You, you, Everybody saw the picture of your pack of cigarettes. Everybody yeah. in the picture with the four of us last night, saw you holding your pack of cigarettes. I mean, yeah. that's not going to do you well down the road. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, are you guys tired of talking about the running back position? It's the running back position or Aaron Rodgers in the Jets. My God. I mean, uh, it, Dalvin, it, it, Cook years, Mike, too. Dalvin Cook Mike coming to Cook. visit the Jets. I know. Little visit. Mikey, hey, yeah, you excited? I mean, two years. We got Aaron for two years. We got him at $35 million less than we thought we'd get him. This is amazing. He left them open for another splash signing, according to NFL Network. <laughs> oh, and no, and, and to your point, Stu. Yes, I'm a little tired of talking about the running back position because there's nothing that can be done about it now. Zero, not a zip. At least with Aaron Rodgers, he takes a thirty-five million dollar pay cut, which every fan in Green Bay is going, "What the hell? You're going to do it for the Jets? You know, nothing here." You know, and so now they have a chance to sign somebody else. So at least it's an evolving story, unlike the running back position. And as I said, I feel bad they're not getting more than what they're getting right now. But it's a stale story. It's not going anywhere. Check out A to Z Sports slash New York Jets for my thoughts on it. Oh, boy, there it is. That was well done. (laughs) You're going to have to fire up another one on Dalvin Cook. You know that, right? (laughs) It's already written. Just Just waiting for the details. Look at you staying ahead of the game. I am so impressed with you, Mikey A. Uh, that is something I would never do. Uh, <laughs> because what if We're Dalvin like- Cook doesn't go to the Jets? You have wasted your time, my friend. Yeah, you find, insert Leonard Fournette, insert Ezekiel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, insert God, whatever exactly. you need to do. <laughs> yeah. All right, I am tired of talking about running back. So when we come back, we'll talk about sunglasses and college football. thing i said about talking about running backs in the first segment i lied because now jim ursay has an opinion on what's going on with the running back position uh what did he use what was the word he used to describe mikey a what's going on with the running back (laughs) running inappropriate he said it's inappropriate he said all the complaining and talk about changing the cba is inappropriate and agents are negotiating or giving bad faith advice all right so he's got one of those running backs who a is on the pup list. That doesn't help matters. B is going to ultimately and eventually want to get paid to Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Mike Golick Sr., you seem to agree with Jim Irsay. Is that is that a fair assessment? Well, listen, I've been saying it all along. And, and as I said, I want all I want everybody to make as much money as they can. And and like I also said, when Saquon Barkley signed his deal, said no, he did not win. And I said, sure, he did. He's still making about $11 million or $10 million. Right. He didn't win as far as the big picture of the running back situation but he's going to make $10 million. And again, it's all relative. It's all according to the market. So don't worry. Don't stop with the tweets of 10 million is more than I'll make. And my, I know, I know it's all relative to the sport. They are the lowest paid and it's going the wrong way, but it's not changing anytime soon. And Mike, you have the tweet. He might as well have just sent this to Jonathan Taylor and his agent. Yeah, that's the thing. Cause like Jim Ursay basically saying we worked really hard on this CBA. And so one player group wanting to crack it open is inappropriate. Like 
no, it's not. Like this is this is being demeaning in a way that doesn't need to happen and does not seem like great business when you are talking almost directly, it seems, to your running back, Jonathan Taylor. And I'm sure Jim Ursay will tweet in like three days that he denies that it's about Jonathan yeah. Taylor yeah. and that they have a great relationship. But Jonathan Taylor was one of the dudes that reacted pretty strongly to this online because he's next. He sees what's coming. He understands how bad this can get. And walking into a situation with Anthony Richardson this year where Shane Steichen is going to have them basically running Philadelphia's <laughs> offense from last year, I'm sure that is going to help Jonathan Taylor's production and also undercut the credit he gets when you've got a guy like Anthony Richardson and, in the back. And here's another thing that that keeps going with the running back situation, guys, is what, what where, what's Jonathan Taylor right now? He's on the what? The pup list. So he's coming off an injury, right? Right. Another yeah. guy who would be in this situation. He would have been the offensive rookie of the year last year, Brees Hall, coming off a major injury, right? I mean, that's the problem. There's a lot of injuries in the NFL, but running backs seem to get hurt. The next two are Bajan Robinson mm -hmm. and Jameer Gibbs. You know, the, the two first-round running backs, we have to see what happens with them, but that's the problem. Jonathan Taylor, injury. Brees Hall, injury. Saquon Barkley, injury. That's a problem that that position holds right now. But, Mike, I think they would respond by saying, yeah, in our first five years, all they do is run us into the ground. That's why we keep getting injured. You know? and, and, and that's that, that's unfortunately, you're not brought into the NFL as a running back to be saved. You are going it, – it, I, I, I guess that's their thing is the, the reason that works against them and for them, and I saw running back saying this, is – your own production ends up being a net it negative does. for you. It does. And all the things we're yes. saying about them being getting injured and the workload on them yep. that end up being used to not pay them are the things that are also supposed to be their use on the field. So I, I, it's, I, a, it's a conundrum because them right. going out and being good team players has made them less able to be paid by a the A thousand NFL, percent sucks. agree. That's why I don't know what the answer is here because you're not bringing in a running back and saying, you know what, I'm going to take it easy on using you so I can have you for two contracts. I'm going to run them, and I'm going to throw them the ball. And that's that's why I, I said I know Dominique Foxworth brought up the idea of the player performance right. pool with that. Right. I thought the other way, reversing polarity on that, would be if you could find an agent with a player with enough leverage to negotiate a usage rate where it's, hey, if you get me past a certain amount of carries or however else you distinguish that, you got to start hitting the escalator. Just the same way they do usage rates for people in television or radio where you got X amount of spots you're going to do over the year. I understand this is difficult because it requires an agent somehow having a player with enough leverage to work this into a That's contract with a team where there's no precedent, but simultaneously not enough leverage to get the long-term deal that, that he wants. So, uh, again, we're reaching for yeah, things that are, are highly unlikely. but We are because – the idea is good to have – it's all about leverage, and the idea is good to have that on the running back and agent side. But then the, a team will just say, huh, no. Right. <laughs> they're, they're not in any position to give in to any leverage running backs have or think they have at this point. Just not yet. It's, Gojo, it's a shame. Gojo made such a great point. It's Saquon Barkley's 300 to 400 touches next season is going to benefit the Giants. It's not going yes. to benefit Saquon Barkley nope. in the long term. It's going to work against them, actually. Yes, it is. Yes, yep. it is. It's ridiculous. I mean. Yes, it is. It's, it's tough, and it sucks. And this is like the last thrash of our summer storylines as we start to get training camp videos now, thank God, because soon we'll start talking about what these running backs are actually doing on the field. Right. And if Dalvin Cook signs with the Jets like we talked about, We'll get to talk about how that helps bridge Brees Hall back yes, it does. that offense right. and what it does for the Jets. Like, we're close. This is the last, like, real high-level thing we've got to do before we finally get to football. Do you guys think that eventually we'll start seeing it affect college football where running backs aren't going to want to carry yes. a load in college yes. football because they're going to want to be saving themselves for that NFL? But what are they going to do? I, I mean, what what what's, what's yeah. their recourse to tell the coach, don't run me. And, and how is that going to help your drafting? Because you want to get drafted high. So how is it? Because at least in the first, you know, contract, it's guaranteed basically if you're that first rounder. So it's a, to use Mike's word, it's a conundrum. I mean, how do you say, give me less carry. So I'm less productive. And then go to the, go to the NFL GM when you're going to go into the league and say, look what I've done in college. Yeah, I will. Your production was down because you wanted it down. They're in a horrible position right now, and I'm not smart enough to know the answer at this point. But that, to me, that's not it. The answer is probably they need a few rule changes that end up having – because, like, 
the story of how we got here is rule changes and CBA changes that had unintended consequences right. that negatively affected one position. So what would they need? Likely rule changes in the sport, a philosophical switch back at football, which we're kind of seeing a little ebb and right, flow of right, 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 right now. Right. And then you would need to see, you know, a few young guys fall out, stay healthy, right. all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's complicated. Uh, Mike, yeah, it is, it is tough. Cause I said for the college thing, I saw Kyle Brandt did that tweet about if you're a five-star <laughs> running back, would you switch positions to something like edge rusher, like ignoring the fact that that's not the position comp you should use because the body types are so different. Right. It's a 1% of high schoolers go on and play big time D1 college football. Yeah. 1% of those college football players go on to play in the NFL. So to dad's point, are you going to short your best opportunity to get to any payday by trying to play the long game and yeah. say, I want to think about my second payday already. Like you don't get that. <laughs> Not luxury. Gonna like you're worried about the immediacy and all these levels. Gojo, what is the position cop that makes sense? <laughs> Uh, linebacker. I mean, dependent because again, this the thing I always say about running back is you can get so many different body types in there now. And there's other positions that are certainly playing within a range, but running back seems the most accessible, right? Guy between five eight, six two, a buck eighty, and two twenty, like something in that range right. there. So some guys like um so famously in Ohio State's game against Utah in the Rose Bowl, um when Jackson Smith and Jigba went off in that game, right. had all those guards, Utah was super thin at corner and had to move one of their running backs to play cornerback during that game. So corner, you know, linebacker, if you're a bigger guy, slot receiver, stuff like that. He's absolutely the right. The, the smaller size of, a, of the running back could be a corner or a slot corner or something like that. The bigger side could be a linebacker type. But that's, you know, again, I don't think kids are are thinking of that right now, especially if they're playing running back and are studs. Like, why am I going to play another position? You always think it's going to be different with you. So right. I, I just don't see that happening. Well, I, I also thought Justin Tuck was great on this. A lot of kids, they want the ball. Give me the ball 35 yes. times a game. I want to be the yep. star of the team. You know, I want to score five touchdowns. They do. They want the ball. Like, playing these, some of these other positions are boring, you know? Out in the Rock is objectively cool. Yeah. That's the other <laughs> tough part of this is, and I remember I listened to Dominique and Charlie talk about this. Running back is cool. The NFL should want the running back position Correct. to still be a glamour position. Yeah. Because it's cool as hell. It's like if, like, um, in the Joker movie, he talks about how killing, you know, using a knife when you attack someone's a little bit more intimate. The NFL right now is all gunfights, right? It's long range artillery right. right now. Running back is up close and personal. It's swashbuckling. It's sword fighting. It's cool. There's a flair for the dramatic. It's a lot of fun like that. And so having that position still matter in football should still matter to the people running football. Everybody loves the big pass play. I'm certainly in the minority. There is nothing like watching great oh. line play up front and a running a running play working based off the line and how they're blocking and it being a successful run. It's to me that the execution of that is really impressive. I think Dallas did that to the tune of three Super Bowls. Did they not? Yeah. Emmett Smith. Right. Oh, I mean, believe you me. Aikman, and you look at Aikman's numbers, they, they do not stack up with today's quarterback play. Yeah. Two of those years, I was unfortunately on the Eagles where, you know, the Cowboys <laughs> were the team, you know, and the doing what they were doing. Were you scared of Larry Allen? And Larry Allen came into the league after I retired. Thank oh, God. Okay. He was not there then. Uh, yeah, but there. were you still scared of Larry Allen? I was scared of him watching him. from the sideline. I'm going, thank God. Thank God I'm not out there right now because <laughs> that man would hurt me. <laughs> All right. I want to ask each of you. We spent so much time on, on the NFL, but I want to ask each of you as uh, college football is getting underway, and we both know uh, you guys will be rooting for Notre Dame. But uh, – what is the kind of the landscape for this season? Is it Alabama, Georgia, everyone else? Like, who are you guys expecting? How many teams have a realistic shot? Gojo, I'll start with you, of winning a national championship. Uh, I would always encourage everyone on this front to go out and check out Bud Elliott. Um does uh, something called the blue chip ratio over at 24 seven sports. He's gone back over the years and looked and you can pretty accurately predict not the teams that will make the playoffs because the playoff expands a little more, but who are actually capable of winning a national championship has to do with the ratio of four to five star recruits on your roster in like a rolling five year period. So there's usually 16 teams every year that have an actual realistic shot right off the bat. Pencil Georgia in like their schedule, especially because this was the year they were supposed to have Oklahoma on the schedule. Right. And because of the SEC move, that got taken off. So they're out of conference. Their schedule. toughest game is like Tennessee, I think. Yeah. And they, I mean, their their schedule is so easy. Yeah. So they're going to fly through it. You can pencil Georgia in. Honestly, Michigan should roll too right now. Like this is the least sure answer. And listen, 
Ohio State's quarterback situation is still going to end up good because you're throwing to an NFL group of wide receivers and all that. Like It's still Ohio State, but Michigan, really veteran team. Another year, pretty easy schedule. If Harbaugh ends up suspended for those four games, their out-of-conference schedule is not quite as bad as last year, but it's like UNLV, Bowling Green, stuff like that. So I actually think Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten this year, and Ryan Day is going to finally get that win. It's been a couple of years now, uh, not beating Michigan, but it'll be between them. Uh, then you got obviously Alabama in there, and and there'll be a, a couple other surprise teams. Listen, you you know we're going to talk about Notre Dame as well. You have a passing quarterback in Sam Hartman who came over from Wake Forest. Your O, o- line is excellent. Your running backs are deep. Uh, let's see what the defense does. But the opportunity they have, you play Clemson, which could win the ACC. Right. You play Ohio State, which could win the Big Ten, and you play USC, which could win the Pac-12. So if Notre Dame were to win a couple or all of those games, I know Notre Dame haters out there are laughing at me right now, but the bottom line is if you beat three conference champions, it's going to look pretty good on your resume. So, you know, let's see. I'll give you two more, Stu. They're the obvious ones. Clemson's in it every year, but they've kind of erased the quarterback problem. Yeah, they have. That's a problem question they had, and they've at least got one sure answer with Cade Klubnick. Florida State's going to be really interesting this year. They bring back a lot. They were very active in the – so Jordan Travis, their quarterback, is I think the best scrambling quarterback in college football, bar none. He's an electric athlete. Jared Verse on the defensive side is going to be a guy that people talk talk about in the first round. But Stugatz, my big sell to everyone this year because it's doom and gloom around this conference – nationally, especially Uh with the Colorado to the Big 12 likely news, the Pac-12 is going to be the most fun conference to watch this year. You have got the best, deepest pool of quarterbacks in college football all residing in the Pac this year. Reigning Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams at SC with Lincoln Riley. They should win the Pac-12, but you've still got Utah, who's won it in back-to-back years. You've got Michael Penix Jr. at Washington, who's probably got the best receiving group in the country. And then you've got good Bo Nix out in Oregon, who they've got a coordinator change, but he looked really good in that offense last year on a team that's also going to factor. So you keep going on down the list. That's going to be a fun conference. Oregon State's really good. DJ Uyunglele landed that's out right. there from in a, a from really Clemson, quarterback-friendly yeah. system. So the Pac-12 is going to have a lot of fun this year. Am I wrong in saying I think Caleb Williams is going to be an exceptional NFL quarterback? Do you guys think that? Do you agree with that? I do. I think the conversation around who's going to go one overall between him and Drake May is going to get really interesting, though. That kid is a freak. And he's a little bit bigger body type wise, but they both. I mean, I would pay good money to see the amount of yards each of them scrambled for behind the line of scrimmage. Exactly. Because they were both running for their life. They they were, but they all both have the abilities and got. It was against Notre Dame. Unfortunately, Kayla Williams scrambled so well and made big plays. And we see that's the NFL now. Scramble to make big plays to scramble to run down the field and make some yards. All right, I'll leave it on this note. I just want you to squash Mike Ryan's uh, dreams here, okay? Uh, University of Miami. Tell Mike how bad they're going to be, okay? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> truthfully i have no idea what right no miami team is right. going to be after last year like i don't know what happened i don't know what they did to tyler van dyke last year i don't know they what's going to happen like, it, that's what they did they ruined him they've got a couple of really good young studs coming up on their offensive line they're like mario cristobal's gonna get that spot figured yeah, out he is and once you set the foundation like that like that's the floor for your football team in college and he's usually pretty good at that so i i mean They'll probably be better. I just don't know what version of that team we're. I want to give Mike Ryan a little bit of hope going into the season. Don't want to squash it just yet. So okay. let's 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 give it a bit. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I'm sure he appreciates it. Uh, yeah. All right, I appreciate both you guys. I know you're going to go do, but a uh, lot of fun last night. And here we are. We swore we'd never talk running back again. <laughs> the very next morning, we're talking running back. We suck. Oh, God, oh, yes, we do. we do. We do. We do suck. <laughs> it's nice to have on the official beat reporter of the new york jets mikey a i mean when you need a to z sports yeah i mean it's every week he's here he produces the (laughs) damn show where is billy gill i mean what is happening i don't think anybody misses billy gill more than i do so <laughs> you realized by him, from his absence, you have realized just how valuable Billy Gill is, right? I, I am going to send him flowers when he returns. I am going to send him chocolates, whatever the man wants, just to make sure that he never leaves me again. 
Is it the wrangling in me part? Is it the the editing part? Is it all of it? Like what it is? Because Billy is excellent. He's not good. He is great at his job. He's a meticulous editor. What is it you miss most about what Billy? And he's great on the air. So what is it about Billy Gill that you miss the most in these proceedings? There is. 500 tons of chaos that emanates off of you and others at 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 the company that filters through Billy before it only before it gets to me right. and it's only a little bit of chaos and I'm like oh okay I thought I was dealing with chaos before until I realized the filters of chaos that Billy Billy Gill is for me right so this yeah. big snowball of chaos arrives yes. at Billy Gill's desk, and then by the time it gets down to you, it's it's whittled away to just about nothing. And so you realize just how good he is at his job, right? And I used to complain about the little bit of snow that hit me. I was like, hey, come on, guys. And now I'm like, oh, my God, it could have been this Mount Everest snowball could have hit me in the face. But Billy, Billy just took care of most of it, and I, I miss him. I miss right. him dearly. Right. Well, he's missed nothing other than us talking about running backs for three weeks. I mean, that's why he took off in July. Paternity leave. It was perfectly yep. planned, man. Three weeks. Unbelievable. Uh, as I mentioned, you you are the Jets beat reporter. Uh, promote what it is you're doing, what you wrote, because there is some Jet news. Dalvin Cook uh, is going to take a visit with the New York Jets, and Aaron Rodgers has agreed. Mike, we have a quarterback for two bleeping years, record. dude. It's at least two years. <laughs> I know. Do you see – Listen, there is a video out there of Aaron Rodgers watching Zach Wilson do drills, correcting him, and then watching him do it again. And you could just see from afar, after he corrects uh, Wilson, he just nods like, yep, that's how you do it. And I'm just thinking to myself, that is that is exactly what we're missing, is this guy who knows, who, who, who can speak the language and can just – direct an offense and it was it was awesome to watch it might not mean anything for zach wilson you know let's let's not get ahead of ourselves but just the fact that aaron Rodgers is so all in to this jets team and he took a pay cut yes. too we used to have to overpay guys just to be like please like jermaine johnson remember that guy yeah we had to be course. like here add another zero please come here please come here Rodgers is like not only am i going to come there but here's 35 million. Go ahead and go do something. Go right. get yourself something nice. I'm gonna give you a second year. Now they can't use that money until year two, right? Because yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they had a lot of money just because uh, sure. of, of how it was working out. But essentially, yeah, he he gave them a gift of just more cap space. Unbelievable. And and if they get Dalvin Cook, I mean, Mike, they're good. They're a Super Bowl contender without Dalvin Cook. They get Dalvin Cook, and a lot of people are going to pick them to win the Super Bowl. That's just the way it is. But what we're saying here is we have a quarterback for two years, but I told you this would be the case because Zach Wilson worships Aaron Rodgers. He's going to absorb and listen to every single word that Aaron Rodgers says and every lesson that Aaron teaches him. And so to me, that's a listen it's in the now it's great to have Aaron Rodgers but for the long term oh my god if Aaron Rodgers is the guy that can help develop Zach Wilson into being a good to great quarterback in the NFL Mike we'll have a quarterback for the next 12 years I mean it's amazing what's was, happened was, to our organization <laughs> I was driving with my wife and the, the flash came across my phone that Aaron Rodgers restructured his deal and he gave the Jets $35 million. And I, I, oh, my God, and I, I said what happened. And she goes, what happens if it doesn't work? What happens if Rodgers sucks? Right. And I said, you know what? It was still the right thing. It was absolutely – they took the swing, and if it doesn't work, then that's just the breaks. But you know what? This is absolutely the right move, and it's awesome. 100 percent listen there are how many teams in the nfl mike 32 32 there are 31 other teams including the green bay packers who wish they had aaron Rodgers. and i don't care what anyone tells me you they see wish they had this rogers well this rogers right give it up money committed looks thinner looks to be in good shape yeah. <laughs> Did you see what happened at Green Bay at practice? The offense was so bad with Jordan Love, the coach made him do push-ups after practice. All of them. I mean, <laughs> we have a quarterback. It's awesome. <laughs> Where'd you write? What'd you write? Promote it. Go ahead. A to Z sports slash New York Jets. I'm writing about everything, but the Rodgers piece is up now. 
Yeah. All right. We have a rule here on God Bless Football. If I have a guest on from any sport and I ask them one question about football, they get on God Bless Football. And so I have Open Championship winner Brian Harmon, who I asked a single football question to. He is going to join us on God Bless Football. Why? I asked him a single football question and July. Super excited for our guest, Brian Harmon. He's the Open Championship winner. Very excited. He's major been on the champion. Tour. He's a major yeah. champion. He's got the claret jug right next to him. Look at him. Look at that big smile on his face. Uh-huh. Uh, Brian, uh-huh. I want to start here because uh, I'm watching the final round with my dad. And my dad's the single biggest reason as to why I love golf. And so... I just wanted to thank you on behalf of all people who are 5'7", 5'8", and lefties. You had two guys in my living room, me and my dad, really pulling for you. Because there's not many 5'7", 5'8", lefty golfers out there. So thank you for getting it done for all of us, okay? Yeah, I got I got that market, market uh, corner, don't I? <laughs> Five foot seven lefty guys, I can play a little bit. The internet is, is, is obsessed with the waggles that you do before you shoot. Does it bother you the reaction? Like, what what has been your reaction to the reaction to the waggles? Yeah, I'm not I, I'm not proud of it. I don't like it. I, I used to be one of the fastest players on tour, um, and just found myself waiting all the time. Yeah. So I made a conscious effort to slow down, but when I did that, it's like I unlocked a little bit of some OCD somewhere. So for me, it's like trying to feel it, trying to feel it, trying to feel it, and I've been working on um, you know working on my routine and, and trying to get it moral dot in but as i've slowed down i'm playing better and oh. so it's it's a it's a delicate balance it's like yeah i would love to i would love to be able to pull the trigger a little bit faster but sometimes especially like when i'm starting to get really nervous it's hard to feel ready enough to to pull the trigger so i'm not going to hit one until i'm ready but at the same time like i'm very cognizant that it, it's got to get a little bit quicker I, I don't like i don't like wagging that much if i could if i could do one look and go i i would do it you're the champion golfer of the year. You're sitting next to the Claret Jug. Do it however the hell you want to do yeah. it, okay? <laughs> well, it is. A, it, I mean, we are in the entertainment business, too, and I want to be as entertaining and to watch as I possibly can. And I know it's not uh, – it can be frustrating to watch a guy waggle so many times. So I am cognizant of it. I'm not just – I don't have blinders on, but I, I do have to do what's best and try to shoot the lowest score I can. That is my real job. Can you kind of put us there in that moment? You're taking the greatest walk in golf up the 18th fairway. You've won the Open Championship. What's going through your mind? Um, you know, there's always a great uh, scene. I, I've obviously watched a lot of Opens. Um, there's a great scene where they always pan to the engraver, starting the uh, starting to engrave the trophy and. I didn't think about that. I didn't know where my ball ended up on the in the bunker. On once I got up there and uh, I saw that the, the ball's in a good spot, I knew I could get up on the green. I was like, "Get that pin ready, grave that baby, let's get it." Yeah, the, get it. the walk would have been a little better if you weren't in the bunker and it, the rain too. I feel like, did you think about ditching the umbrella for that walk, or you're like, "I still got, I don't want my hands to get wet." I just feel like that's the walk that he you wasn't wait. done yet, though. But you wait, you're, but you got a six. I know, I, man. I thought about it. I, I thought because I, I thought if uh, um, it's like, man, I'm gonna hit this four iron on the green, and then I'm gonna close up this umbrella. Yes. Um, but when I hit it in the bunker, I was like, "Damn, yep. I gotta, yeah, you did, you did, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do it one more time." <laughs> Uh, you have to help me with something here because my wife and I were arguing about this the entire weekend. I understand you have three kids. I get it. Yeah. Okay. I have two kids, twin girls. It was rough. They're in college now. Uh, so there's light at the end of the tunnel for both of you. <laughs> I promise you. But my wife was debating like, hey, first three rounds, I understand. But when the man has a five or six shot lead headed into the final round of the Open Championship, how does the wife not jump on the bird and come support and watch her husband play that final round? You know, she is, she's so incredible. I've got such a good support system at home. We talked about it last night. She's like, I, I, I was so close to getting Sam. We're, we're on vacation. They've been on vacation up here in New York for the last couple of weeks. So her passport's at home. 
It's a lot, man. Three kids. I know. Three kids a lot different, too. I'm telling you. But if they show up and then he blows uh, it, then what happened? Then it's their fault. They showed up and then he blew the lead. I mean, you got to just keep right. it all the same in that spot. Keep it status you. quo. Yeah. My wife was just, and I was marveling at it. Like, my wife is telling someone else how to parent their kids and run their family. I'm like, what are you doing? She should have my job is what she should do. How did you celebrate after winning? Like, put us there. What was the celebration like? Uh, We went to... Uh, this place called Hickory Tavern, nice. which is a, it's 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 a great it's a fun restaurant, but it's kind of a troll uh, against Americans, which I found fitting <laughs> since <laughs> everyone was so mad that I, that I won that tournament. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's an English barbecue restaurant um, where all the uh, all the staff dress up in like flannel shirts, like how like you know barbecuers in America would do. <laughs> So we uh, we got a table there. Brendan Todd, Seth Straka, JT Poston, uh, my caddy, my agent. We 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 blew it out. What's it the mi- what's the mindset when you're up when you have a big lead in a major and there's a group of guys and you're just kind of like, are you listening for cheers? Like anytime there's a big roar, are you like, oh no, did someone just eagle? Like what? Like are you more worried about it's, one guy than another? Like what's your mindset when you got this like a bigger lead than you're used to? Well, it, it's one of those things, you know, that, you know, it's going to go one of two ways. Either <laughs> I'm going to win the open championship or I'm going to, I'm going to blow the open championship. Right. I mean, it's just, yes. so, uh, I mean, those thoughts are real and they happen. And I just decided really early on, on Saturday, you know, kind of Friday night, like, man, prevent defense does not work. <laughs> Never does. I mean, how frustrating is when your team gets up, you know, you know, kicks a field goal to go up one or two and you just know they're going to run the prevent and the other team's going to march right down there and kick a field goal and win the game. So, so man, I, I'm going to keep playing exactly the way I'm playing. If I get a chance to be aggressive, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to take on the same shots I've been taking on because it's working. I'm what? not going to abandon what's working. And I just decided to go out there and, and try to play to play great and not play to, to not lose any shots. To anybody. Knowing have- those guys were going to play well. The only way I was going to win that tournament was to, was to execute and, do what I can do. Keep do the foot on the gas. Yeah. Do you have one shot in that tournament, like late maybe 14, 15, where you like stuck a shot and you're just like, holy crap, I'm going to win this? I made a putt on – I made bogey on 13. Uh, didn't hit a I, – I'd, I'd hit some really good shots. Uh, hit a loose loose uh, five iron on 13, made bogey. Uh, 14, hit two really good shots to the middle of the green, and then I hooped like a 35-footer. That was it, yep. And uh, in my head, I was like, curtains. <laughs> curtains. <laughs> yes. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Brian, that's interesting. Like, you realize... Have you read? Does it bother you that you're not a popular champion? Me and my dad loved it because we're 5'7 and lefties, but... You recognize I, I, right? I mean, people were upset look, that you won, and I'm like, who cares, man? He won. Yeah, he I won. It, right? I, I mean, I got I, I got plenty of plenty of friends and family that were cheering me on, and I felt that, and that's all I need. Are you waking up Thursday morning thinking you're Thanks. winning this tournament? No, I mean, I, I know that I possess. I, I've always known that I possess the skill and the ability to to get to a spot to try. When I had a really good chance at 2017 US Open. Yeah. Had a decent chance at the Masters a few years ago. Yep. So I, I know that I've got the game for it, but I don't ever really wake up even with the other tournaments that I've won. It's not like I woke up Thursday and I'm like, oh I'm I'm winning this week. It's just <laughs> it's just a constant like funny relentless game. Yeah. you know, just relentless, you know, trying to get into a, a spot to have a chance on Sunday. Where'd you get the and nickname all, the, where'd you get the nickname the butcher? Well, they tried to give me the dumbest nickname ever. They call me the Harmonator, and the guy asked me about me. I'm like, that's, <laughs> I kind of like it. It's terrible. It's terrible. So, how'd the butcher come about? <laughs> well, the, the, so what's funny is all my friends and even uh, over here, everyone calls me Harmon. You know, no, no one calls me Brian, but everywhere there, everyone calls me Brian. So they started calling me Brian the Butcher. And I was like, well, at least that makes me think of that. Was that uh? What's the the gang, gangs in New York? The Butcher. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that one. Right. I asked Wyndham Clark this after he won the U.S. Open. I'm wondering, because you won $3 million bucks, dude. Like, holy crap, $3 million. I asked him if he checked his account just to make sure the wire went through. Have you done that yet, Brian? Man, I've, I've – people always um, – they always want to know about that. I, I, I just don't care. I, I don't care, man. Really? I, I know that um, – the, the money's the money's great and it, it affords me a lifestyle that 
I'm very comfortable, but I, I don't, I don't do it for that. I don't, I've never chased the money. I chase, I chase that right there. Yeah, but once you've earned it, you'd like to know it's there. Did your wife check? Because Wyndham said it's the first thing he did when he woke up the next morning. <laughs> Is it instant? It's next day? Like, it's already there? I don't know. Oh, he doesn't I have know. no idea. Come he on, doesn't man. know. He has no idea. I have no idea. I'm telling you, I have no idea. Oh, my God. Someone might be robbing me blind right now. Are I, you I looking know. for a money oh. checker? Because I'll be your checker, and I'll <laughs> right. just check your money to make sure just it's there. Just give me your code. I'll go check it out in your card, okay? <laughs> you got to have a guy for the guy yeah. for the guy. <laughs> this guy gets it. How many beers have flowed out of that Clara jug into your mouth so far? Yeah. I got to tell you, we, we we passed this thing around full of Guinness, I don't know how many times, and then uh, I get up here, and we, we took a peek inside of it. Boy, does it need a scrub. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, they we should have cleaned that, that thing first. How bad does it we, smell? Uh, I mean, it, it up. it's got to be foul, right? They don't talk about that uh, part Tomorrow's it. problems. Just kick can down the road. If you need a jug cleaner, I'm also here. I'm just, I'm a very available for anything you need. <laughs> Cam Smith left some beer in that thing, didn't he? <laughs> Cam, Cam did not bring it back clean. I wouldn't have expected him to. <laughs> make make me feel better about my golf game. What's the worst golf shot you've hit in the last six months? <laughs> mm, I went through uh, Justin Parsons and I. First off, Justin's done a, a great job, but we were working on we were working on this one uh, thing where I was hitting uh, a shank a day on the range. Like I'd be okay. warming up and just one, just boom, there it went. Cold shank. Oh, good. And, uh, it does I, make me I, feel I, always, I was like, oh, is that the one? You know, is that the one we've been looking for there? Like, hope that one doesn't make its way out. <laughs> Number four somewhere. Brian Harmon. Uh, I've said plenty ahead. of bad golf shots. No, go ahead. Finish up. <laughs> Brian Harmon with us. Plenty, open, plenty of bad shots. Open championship. Uh, he is the golfer of the year. We're going to play a quick game with you, okay? And then we'll get you out of here. And we okay. appreciate your time. It's, it. it's called Harm In, Harm Out. Yep. Okay? So if you <laughs> agree right. with what I say, Harm In, obviously. And if you disagree, harm out. You All following? Right. All right. You, you got, got it? it? You understand it? You got him ready. It's a tricky game. Okay. <laughs> Tricked out golf carts. Harm in, harm out. Harm out. Really? Oh, come on. Harm oh, out. Man. Simplicity. Oh, God. More uh, stuff that can break. More wires for radios and that nonsense. All right. Out. Saying get left when the ball is clearly going right. Harm <laughs> in or harm out? <laughs> uh, har- harm's in on that one. Harm's I hate to ask one. this, man, but I asked Wyndham, so I have to ask you. Slow play. Harm in, harm out. <laughs> well, I'm kind of in the middle of it now, but I- I'm out on slow play. Harm out. <laughs> Bragging about good rounds during their bad rounds. Harm in, harm out. <laughs> Harm out. Thank you. Uh, fishing for golf balls. Harm in. Harm out. Harm out. If you're uh, if you're rich enough to pay for a round of golf, you can afford yeah. a few more golf balls. Exactly. exactly. Waiting for the green to clear when you know your partner has no chance of making the green. Uh, harm in or harm out. That's me. <laughs> harm out. Keep it. Keep it going. That is so me. Keep I'll wait. I'll wait and then I'll hit like a, a burner. <laughs> I know. Oh, I play with that you. is a gratifying feeling though when someone waits for the green and then they just just you know the worst and they shake it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saying I think it's OB when it's clearly OB. Harm in, harm out. Uh yeah, honesty is the best policy. Harm in. Okay. Looking at putts, not you, the weekend golfer, me and Chris, okay? Because you have to look at putts from every angle. But looking at putts, a weekend golfer, oh, yeah. looking at putts from every single angle. Doing the full circle. And getting down on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, harm in, harm out. Ha- har- harm is out. I love wow. it. I actually, I don't know if you can see me, Brian. I do this move where I hold up my putter in the air. I have no idea what it does. It just makes me feel like I'm reading the green better. <laughs> Whenever I'm with people, I hold my putter up and I'm like, close one eye. And I'm like, all right, I got to read here. We're good. <laughs> Seems he's arm out on that. No, when Jason did what is when Jason did what is major, what I used to do because he would stand behind the ball, he'd close his eyes, he'd imagine the shot. I started doing the same thing as Jason Day. Harm in or harm out? Harm, harm, harms out. Yeah, read, you read it with your feet, man. Yeah. That, that, that all that stuff don't work. Yeah. Uh, swing tip, swing advice, golf advice. Harm in, harm out. Yeah, I'll give I'll give swing advice. Right. Harm in. But what if I'm giving you advice? I wouldn't take it. <laughs> All right, and last one for you. We appreciate the time. Nick Saban, harm in, harm out. Harm out. Yeah, you went to Georgia. I I know. I just wanted you to take a shot at Saban, man. He got a tweet from Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart tweeted at him. Did you really? 
Kirby's a man. Yeah. I played uh, played nine holes with him a couple years ago. He's just a relentless dude. Only He's nine. Super impressive. Why nine? Yeah, what happened? It, he he wasn't go. that good. He had or? to go. He had to go recruit huh? or something. Why nine? Well, yeah, what we. I met him on the back nine. Oh, okay. yeah, right, right. You, you met him on the back. Imagine Kirby left because he was playing too slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to get back to practice. Hey, man, I, I follow the tour a lot. So does Chris. And yeah. so I know how much this means to you. I know how much you have grinded to arrive at where you arrived at today. Really cool. So it was really cool to watch that over the weekend, man. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all having me. All right. And I texted my wife, hey, bleep off. Parent your own kids. Leave his kids alone, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. You you come in here and tell her that. You duck the chair. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. All right. Clean that jug out and enjoy it, man. Thanks, boys. All right, See we'll y'all. Talk, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks. All right.